Let's spend the day at the weird and wonderful Tripsdrill in Germany. This remote theme park combines some awesome roller coasters, unique attractions for all the family, and some very surreal theming for a one-of-a-kind amusement park experience. And in this vlog, I'll take you on the rides and explore everything this beautiful but strange park has to offer. So let's drop into Tripsdrill. Well, good morning from a very cute entrance plaza here at Tripsdrill. We are in the middle of nowhere in Germany, driven through lots of cute little German towns in the fog to get here. And we appear to be at the bottom of a giant hill of vineyards and all sorts. It's, it's a lovely part of the world here. So really looking forward to exploring this park today. We've got some really interesting roller coasters, including a launch skirt Slayer Infinity. We've got two brand new Vekomas, including their very first STC coaster. And this just looks like a very random park with a lot of very random little details. So come and explore with me. <laughs> Well, first impressions of this park is that it looks very different, interesting, cute, unique. I'm, I'm really impressed so far. It looks certainly different from anywhere else we've been. It has a very um, rural countryside feel. We've got some strange animatronics behind me doing some farming practices and things. So yeah, really cool. So just had all my GoPro stuff signed off. You have to do that here at Guest Services. Very helpful, very friendly here. And now we're gonna head in the general direction towards the sort of far end of the park because it's quite busy here today where we've got a Gertzlauer Infinity and a very odd looking log flume. So I think that's probably what's first on the agenda and then we shall explore from there. It's a cross -ball. And here up ahead, we have Caracho. This is a rather large Gerslauer Infinity Coaster launched lap bars. Does have um, some quite positive feedback. So looking forward to this. Well, so far I am really, really impressed by Tripsdrill. Has a really unique vibe. Lots of like little streets to walk down. You do feel like you're in your own little ecosystem, which I love. And Fantasia has that sort of feeling as well, although in a very different way. Anyway, we have got Caracho up first. I'm going to take you on ride with me. So let's go ride an infinity coaster. Caracho behind me there was solid. I wouldn't say it blew me away. I think having ridden the likes of Carnan and Fury, that did feel like a step down from both of those. However, I believe this came first. So it's a case of uh, the innovation of the Infinity Coaster. Now it is much better than either of any of the Gertzlaus we have in the UK though. I would certainly take that over Smiler or Saw. It's way more comfortable because of the lap bars. In terms of the main positives, I think the launch is quite snappy. There was a really cool dive loop into a tunnel, which is quite unique. I don't think I've experienced something like that before. And it, you know, those two row trains do maneuver quite nicely, but yeah, it didn't quite have that raw power that I was expecting from these type of coasters and sort of the other infinities, especially the launched ones have kind of really had that snap to them, which this one didn't quite have, but it was still a really nice and solid coaster. And next up, we've got a Woody Mammut. Let's go do this one. The queue line theming is so mad here. Look, proper chopping the wood for the roller coaster, making their plans.
What a front row ride on Mammut there, a roller coaster entirely conceived and manufactured in Germany and by German companies and was the first wooden coaster to be done so. In fact, I'm going to pull up the name now because I have to look at it on RCDB because it's uh, it's not one I've remembered. It's a company called uh, Cordes Holtzbau. Shout out to RCDB by the way, always check out their stuff, they're awesome. Um, it was okay. Um, it, it's memorable in the sense it had some quite interesting theming. You would have seen there uh, the section before the lift hill, you go down to the little dip and the whole sawmills falling apart and there's alarms going off. And, and then halfway through there was a section through a tunnel as well which had a little bit of theming, so that was nice. In terms of the ride experience, not very forceful. In fact, in many ways it reminded me of Coaster Express at Park Warner in the sense that it was, it was not bad to ride but it didn't really do a lot. A little bit of side to side shuffle, although it was kind of smooth, it was just the movement from side to side. It was okay, um, not something I'd rush back and ride again, but nice to get on it. Let's just take a moment to appreciate the natural beauty, the setting that Trips Drill is in. It really is quite stunning. Surrounded by hills and fields. This is really nice. And there you see Mammut going around in the background there. So this is Xente Sao, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. And it could be we're riding the, the coaster, it could be we're riding the log flume. I don't really know. Either's fine. Well, give this guy a hand. Zoned. I've just ridden my third Gertzlau bobsled. That was okay. Um, they all kind of do similar things, really. Although that one I do feel was aimed at a slightly younger audience. Dogs barking. You get dogs at lots of theme parks out here, which is uh, cool. But yeah, it was all right. Um, decent first drop. Obviously, lots of wild mousey sections as well. Uh, some decent kind of downward helices and stuff like that. Obviously, I do have to apologize for all of Joe's screaming throughout that ride, although his German has improved. Hi, I'm Michael Tension, and you should like this video. Well, up next is Jungbrunnen, a very interesting looking log flume. Got some retro Alton Towers vibes here with the bathtubs, but also I think some perhaps not safe for work uh, elements too, which we shall come to shortly. I wonder if these, these work. No, I'm, um, no. Oh, we've entered some sort of museum. Theme in German parks is very unique to Germany. It's uh, really cool. Looks just like her, mate. Darkness we go, and I believe into the weirdness. Here we go into the 
ancient baths. <laughs> what? see the incredible views up here before we head down this huge drop i have seen people get a little bit wet on this so apprehensive but let's go well that backfired i'm literally dripping and not in a good way Well, I'm a bit wet. That um, that drop was a drench. <laughs> it was literally just dripping off my glasses. I can't see much at the moment, but yeah, that was quite cool. It was a fun log flume with some weirdness in the middle, some dark bits of backwards drop. But that main drop, yeah, that really scooped the water up and threw it all over us. So I think we're gonna get some food and try and dry off for a bit now. Hmm. You can shoot balls out of a chicken's bum into the mouth of horses and pigs. Well, we found ourselves down in the newest area here of Trip Drill, where we've got two intertwining vacomas, very similar to what we have now at Emerald Park in Ireland, which I visited earlier this year. So it's going to be really interesting to see how House Uberkopf and Voldamp compare. Uh, to Emerald Park's TNA Log effort. Really excited to ride these. We're well, heading into what is a very subtle entrance for Hal Dubakopf. And these are the sort of seats we're riding. Top down lap bars. Love this restraint design. I'm really looking forward to this. just ridden the front row of Hal's Uber Cop, Vekoma's first STC. I've now ridden both of their STC coasters and it's quite interesting making the comparison. I will say, I think that Nafiana Force improved on this concept here. It's a much more forceful and whippy ride. However, this is still really good. I think the drop was solid. I think the inversions were good. Although I didn't think any of them had an inversion quite as good as the second one on Fianna Force, which is that really floaty kind of downwards corkscrew. Um, but yeah, a, a, an awesome addition. Obviously great to see the origins of these kind of twin interlocking Vekoma coasters. And we're now gonna head off and do Voldamp for some boomerang action too. But overall, yeah, fairly impressed with Halsu Bukov just not quite as forceful as, as I was perhaps expecting or hoping for, but I still really enjoyed it.
Well, Voldemort was fine. It's like so many other Vekoma family boomerangs, obviously intertwining with Hal's Uberkopf, much like Fianna Force does and Quest at Emerald Park, is a really cool thing. And I hope you get more of these duo coaster combinations picked up by a lot of other parks. So I do think it's a really good addition and it adds a lot to any park. To, to be able to put in two new coasters, both of which can be ridden by guests of 1.2 meter height, opens up to a huge audience, which is great. It also has a goat hanging onto the back. And I can't think of many coasters that wouldn't be improved by having a goat hanging onto the back. Or a ghost, that'd be even better. And next up, we're doing this tilting drop tower called Donna Balkan, for when your kebab makes you feel a bit iffy. Oh, this chap's going for a bit of a climb. <laughs> well, what a strange experience that was. A sort of a shot and drop tower powered by a cable, which then gave you a really aggressive and quite jolty tilt at the top before dropping you back down again. Very short, but entertaining and sort of fits in with the weirdness here at Tripsville. Speaking of weirdness, we're going to go and do this odd swinging thing. Well, that was Vildergouch, and that was just dumb fun with lots of kind of sort of airtime and throwing you around a bit. Some foot choppers up the top there as he came over the support structure. Yeah, that was really entertaining. I can see a lot of parks benefiting from that. It's sort of a sort of a modern day magic carpet ride in many ways, but with a bit more swinging whilst also being like a non inverting top spin. Yeah, interesting. Quite enjoyed that. And here we have a pumpkin pyramid. <laughs> so we stumbled into some sort of wine museum. Obviously this is all based around the vineyards here and they've got a whole museum dedicated to kind of the pressing of grapes and all the processes involved and all the way down in the basement they've got a wine bar too so if you're fed up with the rides you've got other options this is just a standard family evening So I guess it spins when it feels like spinning. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything we could do. But... No, no. Need a wheel in the middle. Create some carnage. <laughs> oh. 
Scarecrow's wearing a Flintstones t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, here we go. Ah, oh, so there's little things on the floor that make Yeah. I think we're going to stop here. Nope. Hey. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that was a very abrupt. Sherman doesn't constantly spin. Yeah, that'd be good. But uh, I guess these are, this is all related to the wine museum. Mm -hmm. And we're in some sort of wine barrels, and these are vineyards, and these scarecrows. That one's wearing a Friends t shirt. <laughs> um, are here to scare off all the birds from nicking the grapes or pumpkins, as it is. So, is this supposed to simulate how you feel when you're drunk, then, you reckon? I reckon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, wine just gives me heartburn, to be honest. Yeah, I just, I just don't do wine full stop. Here we go again. Viewers, this evening. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are, just uh, checking out the pumpkin patch. And oh my God, what are they up to? <laughs> Go on, Joe. Pull the rope. You need support. Well, now it's my turn. This is so bizarre. There's like babies, clocks, frogs. Right, I'm going to go somewhere else where I get nightmares. Ich bin der Doktor Eisenbart. Du rehre dich auf meine Art. Bei deinem alten Hexenschuss, man unbedingt was machen muss. Oder geh mal auf die Rutsche. So this drags a bit, doesn't it? He's, he's, he's taking too long to get to the point, really, isn't he? I just want his owl. It's a bit of a talker, isn't it? Yeah, well, cheers, mate. I, I feel better for that. Hopefully my heart's OK. I, 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 I don't know whether it is or not. I could be in trouble, for all I know. And now we have some kind of bread oven waltzer. It's a spicy meatball. What even is this place? Well, I believe this is the first bread-themed ride I've ever ridden. Well, with those last two rides themed to bread and wine, I feel like I should be going to communion. An interesting combination of theming there. Um, waltzers are normally fun. It kind of got a nice spin at the start, then it dropped off a bit, so not sure why. Obviously, that's quite aimed at quite young riders anyway. It, was only, it only had a one metre height limit, but yeah, we're kind of just enjoying plodding around and getting on some of the more random bits.
Well, a bit of a bonus cred there on a Tivoli Junior coaster. That was actually pretty good fun. Um, really forceful around the helices, seemed to pick up some quite decent pacing at times, which for a junior coaster is fine. So that was quite enjoyable. And now behind me, Joe is about to ride this air race thing. Is it an air race? No, I'm thinking of the Zamperla ones. Either way, you go up there, you kind of go round, you try and spin it with your handles. I really couldn't be bothered because I've got to drive in half an hour's time and I've got an hour and a half drive to the airport. Not sure I want to do that dizzy, but let's see how Joe gets on, shall we? And there he is at the back. He's looking relaxed, he's looking focused. He's up against all these other competitors. One of them has funky colour hair. I think that's something that could cause him problems. But let's see how he gets on. Well, I just had their instructions from the official. He wants a clean and fair battle. Can Joe from Theme Park Insanity come out victorious? Well, for some reason, it looks like the start time has been delayed. This is not helping Joe's nerves. He's tapping rhythmically, trying to stay in the zone, but who knows if that's going to be enough. Well, as mentioned before, we, we knew this could be a troublemaker. She's already looking to have, yep, she's looking for an advantage. Well, I don't know what kind of Tom Fuller is on here. Well, some sinister behavior there. They don't know Joe's the favorite here. So they're trying to get an early advantage. Well, it's all going wrong here. You can see he's losing his focus. He's slipped out of the zone. His mental preparation is letting him down. Come on, Joe, put it together. Oh, now he's dancing. This is, this is bad news for everyone. Well, things have gone from bad to worse here as now the water has stopped as well. They really are trying to unsettle Joe's nerves. Mind games being played here by the officials. And here he comes. What's the decision? He's unlocked that guy's restraint. Okay. I think these are all competitive tactics. Yeah, oh, we've got the thumbs up. We've got the thumbs up. No, we haven't. No. Oh, and we're back. We're back with the fountains. That's a positive sign. Well, someone's just got up and walked off. Clearly not serious about the competition ahead. There's always one. And it looks like we're off. Now, has all this pre-match tension got to Joe's head? Let's find out. Oh, we've got some early movement. Well, I have to say, this is a disappointing start from all competitors. Not a single flip registered at this stage. Oh, it's a very weak field. But Joe is starting to... No, he's not quite got over. He's upside down, but he's not going all the way. Not a full rotation. Come on. And now we do have someone on the outside. has started to do some really good work here. Zoomed out slightly just to give you a better perspective. But as we can see, the outside is where it's at. Joe is struggling. He's got some side-to-side -side movement, but is it enough? He's, he's just stuck upside down. Oh no, he's got... No, no. Well, he's running out of time here to turn this round. I think, I think Mullet Man on the outside probably has the number here. We're coming to a stop. And I don't think Joe registered a single flip. This is a disaster. He trained so hard. Months of preparation down the drain. And I think those pre-match mind games may have worked. And a very disappointing performance. Well, we'll catch up with Joe shortly and find out what happened. Joe, what happened? That was a really disappointing performance. It, it, looked, it looked as though the pre-match delay and mind games there may have may have affected your performance. I mean, to be fair, I tried on the track. It's just it wasn't in the stars today, unfortunately. But hey, you give it your best shot, and that's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. Well, that concludes our day here at Erlebnis Park Tripstrill, and indeed this leg of the German trip as we fly home in a few hours' time. But uh, I just want to have a little chat about this place because it's certainly interesting. First of all, you've got to say it's absolutely nestled in natural beauty. The landscaping around here is stunning 
and the park really do lean into that, which is awesome to see. There is also a lot of weirdness, as you've seen with the nudity, the chickens pooing balls into people's mouths and all that sort of nonsense. But I guess that's just how they do it here. <laughs> Um, Ride-wise, Caracho was a really good Gertzlau Infinity Coaster. The two Vekomas, also really good, but you can tell that's kind of the prototype version of the STC. I don't think it lands quite as well as Fianna Force does at Emerald Park, but I really recommend this place. I think it's weird, it's wonderful, it's wacky. Everyone's super friendly. I think the prices on park have been really reasonable too, with food and merch being uh, much cheaper than the other two parks we visited on this trip. So yeah, if you can, Get yourself down here to Trips Drill. It is a bit remote, but it's certainly worth making the effort. Anyway, I'm a bit theme parked out. I'm gonna head home now, see my cats, and chill for a couple of days. But if you would like to check out some more vlogs from this series, then the playlist is up on the screen now. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall catch you soon. Cheers, bye.